downtown San Francisco. It's the Cube covering RSA North America 2018. Welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at RSA Conference 2018 in downtown San Francisco. 40,000 plus people. It's a really busy, busy, busy conference. Um, talking about security, enterprise security, and of course a big new and growing important theme is cloud. And how does public cloud work within your um, your security uh, structure and your ecosystem and your system. So we're excited to have an expert in the field who comes from that side. He's Tim Jefferson. He's a VP Public Cloud for Barracuda Networks. Tim, great to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely, so you worked for Amazon for a while, for AWS, so you've seen the security from that side. Now you're at Barracuda and you guys are introducing an interesting concept of yeah. public cloud firewall. Yes. So what does that mean exactly? Yeah, I think from my time at uh, AWS, one of my roles is working with all the global ISVs to help them re architect their solution portfolio for public cloud. So got uh, some interesting insight to a lot of the friction that enterprise customers had moving their data center security architectures into public cloud. And the biggest friction point tend to be around uh, the architectures that firewalls are deployed. So they ended up creating, if you think about how our firewall was architected and created, it's really designed around data centers and tightly coupling all the traffic back into a centralized policy enforcement point that scales vertically. That ends up being kind of a real anti-pattern in public cloud best practice, right, where you right. want to build loosely coupled architectures at scale elastically. So uh, just from feedback from customers, uh, we've kind of re-architected our whole solution portfolio to embrace that. And not only that, but looking at all the native services that the public cloud uh, IaaS platforms, you know, Amazon, Azure, and Google provide, and integrating those solutions to give customers the benefit, all the, the security telemetry you can get out of the native fabric, combined with uh, the compliance you get out of uh, web application and next generation firewall. So it's interesting, uh, James Hamilton, one of my favorite people at AWS, oh, yeah. Yeah, and he used awesome. to have his Tuesday nights with, yeah. with James Hamilton at, cool. at reInvent, very cool. And, and what always impressed me every time James talks is just the massive scale that Amazon and the other yeah. public cloud vendors have at their disposal, whether it's for networking and running cables or security, et cetera. So I mean, what is the best way for people to take advantage of that security, but then why is there still a hole where there's a new opportunity for something like a cloud firewall? I think the, the biggest thing for customers to embrace is that uh, there's way more security telemetry available in the APIs that the public cloud providers do than in the data plane. So most traditional network security architects consider network packets the single source of truth, and a lot of the security architectures are really built around um, instrumenting in visibility into the data plane so you can kind of crunch, th crunch through that. But the reality is the management plane on AWS and Azure and GCP offer a tremendous amount of security telemetry. So it's really about learning what all those services are, how you can use them to instrument controls, mine that telemetry out and then combine it with um, uh, control enforcement that the public cloud providers don't provide. So that kind of gives you the best of both worlds. It's interesting, a lot of times we'll hear about a breach and it'll be someone who's on on Amazon or another public cloud provider, and then you see, well, they just didn't have their, it's usually they didn't really have their, cons, their uh, con, uh, settings in the right yeah. configuration, yeah, yeah. right? It's usually really uh, kind of security 101 things. But the reality is just because it's a new sandbox, there's new rules, new services, you know, and engineers have to kind of, and the, the other interesting thing is that developers now own the infrastructure they're deploying on. So you don't have the traditional, um, controls that maybe network security engineers or uh, security professionals can build architectures to prevent that. A developer can inadvertently you know, build an app, launch it, not really think about security vulnerabilities to put in. That's kind of what you see in the news, people kind of doing um, you know, a, you know, basic security misconfigurations right. that some of these tools can pick up programmatically. Now you guys just commissioned a survey mm -hmm. um, about firewalls in the cloud. I wonder if you can share some of the high level uh, outcomes of that survey, what well, you guys find? Yeah, it's similar to what we were, were chatting. It's just that um, I think you know over 90% of enterprise customers uh, acknowledge the fact that there's friction when they're deploying their data center security architecture, specific, specifically network security tools, just because of uh, the architectural friction. And the fact that it's really interesting, you know, a lot of those tools are really built because everything's tightly coupled into them, but in the public cloud, a lot of your policy enforcement comes from the native services. So for instance, your segmentation policy, the route tables actually get put into the, when you're, when you're creating the networking environment. So uh, the security tools, a network security tool has to work in conjunction with that, uh, with those native services in order to build architectures that are truly compliant. 
So is firewall even the right name anymore? Or should it have a different a different name? Because really, we always think, all right, firewall was like yeah. a wall, and well, now it's really like, more kind of this layered kind of risk yeah. management approach. There's definitely um, uh, a belief, you know, among especially the cloud security evangelists to to make sure people don't think in terms of perimeter. You don't want to architect in something that's brittle and something that's meant to be truly elastic. I think there's kind of two two far. You know, the word firewall is is expanding, right? So. Um, more and more customers now embracing web application firewalls because the applications they're developing are, you know, Port 80 or 443, they're, they're public facing web apps, and those have a unique set of protections uh, into them. And then next generation firewalls still provide, you know, ingress, egress policy management that the native platforms don't offer. So they're important tools for customers to use for compliance and policy enforcement. The key is just getting customers to understand. Um, thinking through specifically which controls they're trying to implement, and then architect the solutions to embrace the, the public clouds they're playing in. So if they're in Azure, they need to think about making sure the tools they're choosing are architected specifically for the Azure environment. If they're using AWS, the same sort of thing. Both those companies have programs where they highlight vendors that have um, well architected their solutions for those environments. So Barracuda has you know, two security companies, this is Amazon Web Services. We are the first security vendor for Azure, so we are their, their partner of the year. So um, it's just, the key is just uh, diving in and, and uh, there's no silver bullet, just re-architecting right. the solutions right. to embrace the platforms you're deploying on. What's the biggest surprise to the security people at the company when they start to deploy stuff on a public cloud? There's obviously things they think about, but what do, what do they usually get caught by surprise? I, I think it's just the depth and breadth uh, of the services. There's just so many of them, and they overlap a little bit. And the other key thing is, um, for especially for network security professionals, a lot of the tools are made for uh, software developers, and they have APIs, and, and their tooling is really built around software development tools. So if you're not a, a software developer, it can be pretty intimidating to understand how to architect in the controls, and especially to leverage all these native services, which are all tied together. Um, so it's just bridging those two worlds, you know, software development and network security teams, and, and figuring out a way for them to collaborate and work together. Um, and our advice to customers have been, uh, we've seen some, you know, comical stories where there's battles between the two. Those are always fun to talk about. But the, I think the best practice is around getting, um, instead of uh, security teams saying no, I think everybody's trying to get culturally around how do I say yes. But now the burden can be back to the software development teams. The security teams can say, hey, here are the list of controls that I need you to to cover in order for this app to go live. You know, HIPAA or PCI. Here are these compliance controls. You guys choose which tools and automation frameworks work as part of your CI CD pipeline or your development pipeline, and then I'll join your sprints and you guys can show incrementally how we're making progress to those compliance. And how early do they do they interject those that data in, in kind of a, a pilot program that's on its way to a, pro, a new production app? How early do, you, do the, vet, the devs need to start baking I that in? I think it has to be from day zero because as you embrace and think through the service, the native services you're going to use, depending on which cloud provider, each one of those has an ecosystem of other native services that are you know can be plugged in and they all have overlapping security values. So it's kind of thinking through your security strategy and then you can be, you know, washed away by all the services and what they can and can't do. But if you if you just start from the beginning, like what policies or compliance frameworks, what's our risk management posture, and then architect back from that. You know, start from the end in mind and then work back. Say, hey, what's the best tool or services I can instrument in? And then it may be starting with um, uh, less cloudy tools. You know, just because you can instrument it, it's something you know. And then as you build up more expertise, depending on which cloud platform you on, you can sort of. Uh, instrument in the native services that you get more comfortable with them. So it's kind of a journey. From but you got to start from the beginning. Bake it's got to be from, from day zero. zero. It's not a yeah. bolt on anymore. Yeah. yeah. All right, Tim. Last question. What are you looking forward to uh, at RSA this week? I, you know, it's uh, I'm I'm very cloud biased. You know, so I'm always looking at uh, the latest startups and and how creative people are about rethinking how to Im deploy security controls. Um, and just kind of the story and the, the pulse around um, the friction with public health security and seeing that evolve. All so, right, yeah. well I'm sure there'll be lots of them. It, it yeah. never it never fails to fascinate me the way that this uh, valley keeps evolving and yeah. evolving and evolving, uh, yeah. whatever the next kind of it's big amazing. opportunity is. Yeah. All right, he's Tim Jefferson, I'm Jeff Frick, thanks for stopping by. You're watching theCUBE, we're at RSAC 2018 in San Francisco. Thanks for watching.